Alright guys, um, today I wanted to just go over WordPress with you, a brief tutor tutorial on how to uh, log into WordPress and, and kind of add and edit content. Um, as you can see, I'm uh, just on one of my test sites. Uh, this is just the home page of a stock frugal, frugal installation. Um, so what I want you to do if, if you want to log into WordPress is you just go up to uh, your home page URL and at the end of it you just type in wp-admin admin hit enter and as you can see uh, here's the login uh, section um, usually admin is going to be your username but you can make it whatever you want it what, whatever you want it to be um, and then you put your password in here and we log in okay now as you can see we're in the WordPress dashboard uh, it's basically the name for the the uh, back end of WordPress where we can edit, or add, it, add and edit our content and things like that. Um, today I just want to go over the basics. Um, as you can see back here you've got posts and you've got pages. Um, you may, depending on what your dashboard looks like, it may look like this and you just uh, click the down arrow to uh, get the uh, subpages or subsections to drop down. Um, let's go ahead and start off with a page. Let's say you want to edit a page. So we're going to click on edit under pages and then as you can see we only have one page currently so we'll go ahead and uh, click on edit right here and here's the content that's in there right now now as you can see um, here's kind of the basic it's almost like Microsoft Word in the sense that you know you you can do bold and italic and change the you know different kind of heading sizes or text size you can change the uh, text color you can do spell check and different things like that. Now just so you know, you may not be seeing this when you first go into WordPress. If I click this little guy right here, uh, it says show, hide, kitchen sink. This may be what you're seeing. So if you're missing that bottom bar, just click this little button and it'll drop it down. Okay, so let's say you come in here and you decide you want to uh, add some content. So we'll just go here and we're gonna say this is added content. Okay. And let's say you wanted to make uh, this bold. And let's say under it you wanted to um, add some oops, more content. And let's say you wanted to make this some kind of a heading. So you go like that, go over here and make it heading 2. By the way, the, the lower the number, the larger the heading size usually. So. Heading 2 is a fairly large heading size. Okay, so we've made a few changes. We're going to click on uh, ABC guy to check spelling, and it uh, did, did the little red squiggly line. It looks like it's saying WordPress is the only thing misspelled, and of course that's a name, so it, it's not misspelled. But if it were, you can actually right-click anything that has the squiggly lines under it, and it'll give you suggestions. Uh, and then you would just left-click uh, whichever suggestion is correct and of course in this case that would be none of them okay so then we're gonna go ahead here and click update page on the right hand side now to see the changes uh, we need to go back to your home page um, to do so the easiest way right here where it says visit site I'm just gonna right click on this and say open uh, link in a new tab that way we can leave this open so now we're on the home page we're gonna click about and as you can see here's the bold content you added and then here's the or I added and then here's the content that, that I added that's under uh, the heading 2 size. Um, so now let's say that we wanted to go in here and uh, just delete this guy right here. Well, we just go back in, come in here, delete it. Like I said, it's just like Microsoft Word. Delete it out, click Update, Page, and come over here and refresh, and it should disappear. So it's really super simple, guys. It really is. Like I said, if it's pretty much if you can... If you can work in Word, um, then you can pretty much do this. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, now, let's go ahead and add an image to this page. Um, to do so, uh, you would put the cursor in the section that you want the image to be added. And I want it to be right above the top line, so I'm going to put it to the far left of the top line. It says Upload Insert. Click on this little square right here that says Add an Image. And select Files. And as you can see, it brings up um, the standard, you know, browser uh, for your files. And, you know, you could click desktop and search your desktop or wherever you want to go. I've already got it in a test image folder and 
I want to uh, use this particular image, so I'm going to double click that and it uploads the image. All right, now in this little section, it's pretty straightforward. As you can see, by default, it's, it's going to do the full size. It tells you what that size is. And then if you decide you want it to be a smaller size, it gives you a couple options. There's medium and then there's thumbnail. And you can select that if you want that. Now I'm going to just keep it full size. And then you can tell do you want it centered, left, right, whatever. I'm going to leave it centered. And then link URL, if you wanted the image to actually link to a either a page on your website or a different website or anything like that, you would just uh, add the URL, the uh, web address there um, before you click uh, insert into post. Uh, but I'm not going to because I don't want this to be clickable. Okay, so once that's done, we click insert into post. As you can see, it inserts it full size, centered. And I like to have a little bit of space between my images and my first content. So I'm going to go ahead, as you can see, the cursor is right next to there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and it puts a little space there. Okay, so I've added my image. I'm going to click update page. I'm going to go over here, and once this little thing is done loading, I'm going to refresh. And as you can see, I've successfully added the image to the page. Once again, it's super, super simple, as long as you know the few little buttons to click, and that's what I'm here to show you. Okay, so let's go ahead now, and we've added, we've edited page uh, content, and let's go ahead now and mess with posts. All right, so I'm going to go ahead up to posts. I'm going to click edit. Now, real quick, if you don't know already, the difference between a page and a post, uh, they're very similar, but as you can see, a page is something that generally will sit up in the navigation bar and it's usually going to house content like about or contacts or services or archives things like that it's like a it's a static area for the most part on your website um, now if we go to the the home page of this this is a typical blog layout so as you can see the home page houses your latest blog post now this is a test post um, I'm gonna click in here now, a post is you know is gonna be generally more something that you um, that it's more of an article, uh, more something that something that you're going to share with your readers um, at, on a regular basis. And uh, as you can see, you know this says you know the author, the date, you know the category it's in, if there are any tags. It happens to be one comment, and uh, you know as you can see, you know a blog posts, you can comment on blog posts and things like that. Here's a test comment and stuff like that. So basically, you know, real simple uh, difference between the two. You may have already known that, but I just wanted to. Um, make that I wanted to clarify that so let's go ahead go ahead and here as you can see we're under posts edit um, so we're gonna edit this post we're gonna click edit and I just wanted to show you it's all the same stuff same editing information same content you know or whatever you can add remove bold italicize whatever your content um, the only difference I wanted to show you is over here you can add tags and you can add and edit uh, categories the difference basically between the two, tags is kind of more for search engine optimization. Uh, they both are in a sense, but tags are specifically, you know, if you create, uh, like on MotivateThyself.com, I talk about motivation. I talk about a lot of things, productivity, whatever. But let's say I wrote a post on motivation. Well, I might want to tag that post motivation. Uh, and so, I, so the search engines have one more reason to believe that this post is about motivation or at least has motivation content inside of it. And then you want to separate these by commas. And let's say you also wanted to, it's, it's about motivation, so let's put the word drive in there to kind of um, be another tag for motivation. And we'll click add, and as you can see, it's got two tags now, drive and motivation. And then down here, let's say I wanted to add a category called motivation, because I don't have that here. So motivation, click add. And then I want it to just be in that category, so I'll uncheck uncategorized. So as you can see, I've added these two tags. I've put it in. I've added and, and put it in this um, category. And then I can click update post. And as you can see, if I come over here, when I refresh the page, now it says in motivation tags drive motivation. So. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, uh, you can do the same things. You can add images and whatever. You can do the same things you can do uh, in the posts as you can in the pages. Um, so let's say though, let's let's go back to um, or let's go ahead and add something, okay? And once again, this is pretty similar for both pa pages and posts. But let's add a post. So we're going to go to Add New under Posts and go here and we'll type you know this is a test post okay and then you know test post whatever you know just put put your content in there and edit it do whatever you want add images or whatever 
if you want to put it, let's put it under motivation. You could add your tags if you'd like to. And then we're going to hit publish. Now, before we do, real quick, publish immediately is right there. If you click edit, you can actually change the date and time and, uh, and schedule it to publish at a later date. But I'm just going to tell it to publish immediately. Okay, now if we go back to the home page, um, we should see, okay, this is a test post. All right, so here's our latest post. As, as you can see, when you create a post, the way it works is um, the, the, the post you just have, that you've just created will be the latest post. It'll push the previous posts down on the list. All right, so if we go in here, you can see, you know, there's a post, you can leave comments, whatever. Um, and as you can see, I've got it under motivation. It doesn't have any tags currently. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and let's say we want to delete that post, all right? Uh, we could just do it by clicking delete right here, but let's just say we had just come into the WordPress dashboard and we want to delete a post. We click edit under posts, and then we find the post we want to delete and just click delete. It says you want to do this. You say okay. It's gone. You click this. It's gone. Okay. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you before I finish up here. Um, let's say, let's go ahead and add a new page, all right? There's pages. We're going to click add new. But let's say, um, I'm going to pop back over to the home page for a second here. Let's say that you wanted to add a page, but you wanted it to be before about. Um, you wanted it to be home, and then your new page, and then about. Okay. Well, the way it normally works is if you don't specify, then each page is gets a number zero, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, but it goes alphabetical. So other than the home page, which of course always sticks to the left, the other pages are alphabetical. So if I put a contact page here, which I'm about to add, um, of course, you know, it's A, C. So, of course, C comes after A. So it'll it'll naturally sit right here. So let's first do that. Let's just add a contact page. All right. So put the title. This is a contact page. Okay. And then, as you can see, the page order is zero. So we're just going to click Publish and it should show up right after about okay but like I said let's say you wanted to move that order around and you wanted to put this before here well both of these have a page order of zero so what we what we need to do is give about a page order of one and leave contact as, at zero which means that this will then be before uh, about so let's go back here we're gonna click edit pages and we're gonna go to about click edit change the page order to 1 which of course comes after 0 0 being the number of the contact page and as you can see if I refresh it switches them so now contact uh, the contact page page has a page order number 0 and this has a page order number 1 which overrides the alphabetical ordering that it does by default so and of course if we go into contact you know there's your contact page is the words I just added so um, that's that's pretty much that um, now I wanted to go over one other thing before I finish up I just remembered uh, we need to talk about widgets um, as you can see right here we've got recent posts categories this is your sidebar um, and uh, this is one area where you can add content through something called a widget alright so let's go ahead in here go back to the uh, dashboard and if you go down to appearance and then down to widgets and click that you'll see an area it says current widgets their sidebar now if we click this down arrow um, by default the very just basic stock uh, frugal theme has three widget areas it has the sidebar and it has header right and single posts and uh, what the, these are basically banner sections um, and as you can see header right is right here this is where uh, that widget would go and then single post if you click inside a post the single post goes in this area if you notice there's this uh, this like shaded area um, that is where uh, where the, you know if you add anything to the single post widget it'll go inside of this so uh, so but like like I said for now let's just focus on the sidebar alright so already in sidebar and let's say we want to add uh, recent posts and categories and um, we'll do uh, m let's do links add links okay click save changes and then if you go here it, it says recent posts and categories these are actually hard-coded into the sidebar 
Uh, if that makes no sense to you, don't worry about that. Basically what it means, I, I wrote these directly into the sidebar, so they'll be there by default. Once you start adding widgets, these disappear, and then whichever widgets you add are what appear on the sidebar. So if I refresh this, as you can see, I added the recent posts, I added the categories, but I also added something called, it says links, but it's called a blog roll, and um, it adds all these uh, default links that come with the WordPress theme. Um, so there you go. So as you can see, I added recent posts, categories, and links, and here they are. Now let's say you wanted to put the categories first. So instead of recent posts and categories, you want it to be categories and recent posts. Very, very easy. You just go over here, and you see when you put the mouse over there, it does the little arrows. You just hold that down, and you move it up. And as you can see, it moves it above the recent post. Click Save Changes, and then you just refresh the page, and it just switches. Super, super simple. Okay, so um, that's uh, that's bas the basics of kind of creating widgets. Now, let's say you wanted to edit some of these. If you click Edit, uh, you know you can add a title to categories. So instead of saying categories, you could say you know blog categories or whatever. Um, you can, you've got some other options here. If you want to save that, you would just click Done, or you even could just remove it. Let's say we want to remove categories altogether. So we'll just click Remove, Save Changes. and they're gone. Okay, so now we just have recent posts and blog roll. All right, now real quick, let me just say, if you want to jump between widget areas, you first need to go there. So let's say we did 468 by 60 header right. You select that, and then click Show. And then you're in that widget area, and you can add stuff. So, you know, if we wanted to add, you know, a search, uh, the search bar there, and then we could click Save Changes, and then refresh the page, and there you've got a search bar in the widget area. Now that's probably not, uh, you know, that may or may not work with your theme or whatever, but you know, it's just an example. Oftentimes what I, I like to put up here are banners. Um, most of my sites have banners on the top right uh, for either uh, promoting a different website or maybe promoting a page inside my website or whatever. Um, but you can use it for whatever you want. It's just there if you need it. So let, let's go ahead and remove that. We'll click edit, remove, save changes, and then refresh the page and you can see it disappears. Anyway, so uh, that's, that pretty much covers it. We've got pages and posts, editing, editing, adding content, deleting, whatever, uploading images and stuff, and then going to widgets and adding and editing, you know, widgets and whatnot. Um, that's pretty much it, and then you would, you know, when you're done, you just X out of it, and, you know, you're back on your home page, and you've, your changes are there, and there's your contact page, whatever. Um, it's pretty straightforward, guys. It's it's really not that hard. The only thing I would say is that it, it's as complicated and frustrating as you let it be or make it. And what I mean by that is um, if you're just doing the basics, it's pretty straightforward and, and you should be able to add your own content without any real problem. Um, but if you if you start going into kind of more advanced, uh, you know, areas or whatever, you know, it, it can get as complicated as you want it to be. And that there's nothing wrong with that. I'd encourage you to kind of, um, you know, stress the boundaries and see what you could do, but just be careful if it's, you know, if this is a, a business site or, or a blog with lots of traffic or, you know, just anything like that that you don't want to screw up. You know, just be careful when you're in the back end um, messing around because, you know, uh, certainly, you know, the wrong changes can cause some negative effects. But for the most part, WordPress does a pretty good job of keeping you from from making major mistakes when you're in the dashboard. So anyway, there's just a few odds and ends. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's useful. And uh, that's all I got for you. And I'll see you around.